Central Methodist hosts Missouri Valley College for a 5.30 tip on Thursday night inside Puckett Field House. Your general thoughts on Missouri Valley heading into the game? Well, Missouri Valley has a lot of upperclassmen. Anytime a, a ball club has a lot of upperclassmen, it can be scary. There's a lot of talent there as well. We're not quite sure um, if the sweet kid, Alexa Sweet, is playing. Um, she may or may not be. If she is, that's certainly a, a, the leading scorer and a big-time player uh, from the guard position. But the strength of their ball club, I think, lies in the paint. Um, they've got a kid inside that's top 10 in the country in, in block shots. She's the leading rebounder at 8.6. Ebony Brown is back as a junior, also can rebound the ball uh, really well. Morales is the big kid that blocks shots. And then, of course, you've got the Jackson Twins, who are a uh, guard, point guard that's just heady and, and always has big games against Central Methodist. And her sister's one of the best shooters uh, in, in the league and, and shooting 42% from three. So, you know, we know we're going to have our hands full. We know that last year we lost five games in the regular season, and one of them was to Missouri Valley. Um, they uh, have an opportunity, you know, this is considered a bit of a rivalry game, so they think they have an opportunity to come in here um, as a, to beat a ranked team, and a target on our back keeps getting bigger, so we're going to be ready for it. The Eagles split with the Vikings last year, as you just mentioned, to losing by one point in Missouri Valley before winning pretty handily in Fayette. What do you think will be the key to this year's first matchup? Well, it's, they're pretty similar, and in and, and, and essence, we're pretty similar in what we want to do. You know, they want to grind this thing out. They, they've got a lot of mass and, and a lot of really strong inside play. They want to get this, keep this thing in the mid-50s, high-50s. We'd like to try to get this thing in the, the mid to the high-60s, maybe even low-70s. And the lower the score... The lower the score is, the, the more they're going to like the pace, and the higher the score for us, the, the, the more the tempo is going to be in our favor. At their place last year, they dominated the boards, both offensively and defensively. They were more physical. They finished around the paint a lot at a much higher clip, and that's going to be what it's about tomorrow as well. It's going to be a, a contradiction of styles between them and us, and uh, you know we're going to have to make sure we come out and don't get caught up in a half-court game um, where we uh, stand around and watch, and we're probably going to see a little bit of zone. Uh, but either way, we're, we hope we've had a couple good days of, of practice. We had a good film session today and a couple good workouts, and so hopefully we're ready to, uh, to play basketball and take care of business. Gabby Morales, the senior forward for the Vikings, is their leading scorer and rebounder at just under 10 points per game and at 8.6 rebounds per game. From watching her on film, what do you think makes her such a very good player? Well, first, she's improved a lot since last year, so credit her uh, and Coach Couch for, for how she's developed as a post player. She's long, and she's got a good motor. She also leads them in minutes played. She's, telling it, she's playing a ton of minutes for a six-foot kid, um, got good feet, good hands, really long, gets her hands on a lot of passes. She's in the top ten of the country in block shots, but she also is just a, is a, a factor inside where she just may not block a shot, but she uh, changes a lot of shots, and that's scary when there's a kid like that. Offensively, if she catches the ball deep or gets an offensive putback, she's going to score. So we got to make sure we keep her off the bat, off the off the the offensive boards, especially. And we're going to get a body on her, and uh, hopefully we utilize the shot fake and, and get inside of her and block her out, and maybe pick up a couple cheap fouls. And we also want to make her guard our bigs on the perimeter a little bit. We also want to push the tempo against her. But she's certainly a weapon that we're going to have to take care of. With such a big rivalry game between these two schools, what do you say to your team in the locker room during pregame? Well, Thursday? you know, it is a rivalry, and it's been a rivalry for years, especially last year when we lost five league games, and one of them was to these guys, and they put their will on us. And so we got to make sure that we play our style. So we've talked a lot about that. We've talked a lot about the fact that because we're ranked – and we've moved up. And because right now, early, we're sitting on top of the standings, everybody's going to give us their best shot, especially a rival. So it's important that we come out. You know, it's been really challenging for us and the girls because without being in classes, there's not a set schedule and there's not a ton of structure. So we're trying our best to make sure that we're pushing them hard enough, giving them enough free time, but not pushing them too hard, but not too much free time. And so those are the challenges that all of us, all the schools are dealing with right now. And so I think the team that comes out more focused tomorrow and, and the team that is hungry will one thing we know about Missouri Valley, it doesn't matter if they've lost six in a row or won six in a row, they're going to play really hard and they're going to play, uh, play inspired basketball and want to put their will on us. What will be the keys in the first couple of minutes of the, of the game in order for your squad to set the tempo? Well, I think that we need to get, we're going to get out and put some pressure on them, whether it's in a zone press or a man press, and we need to get the ball inside ourselves and try to establish a, an inside presence ourselves against their dominant force. You know, we're going to try to throw some things at them that they do, they're going to try to throw at us and try to take them off balance a little bit. It's important for us to come out and go hard and be ready, and, and we haven't come out and started especially well in the last few games, and it's important for us to come out and hit some jumpers early and, and also maybe try to get to the free throw line early. That's going to be big. And the 
The biggest issue is we got to make sure we take care of the ball when we play the up-tempo style. Up-tempo style is good, but if you turn it over 15, 18, 20 times, we're not going to take advantage of it. Do you worry about your team at all overlooking this game and uh, for Saturday's match? It's a bit of a concern because you know it is a, it is a, a classic quote trap game. But the one thing I've learned from last year against these guys and last year against other teams and um, looking around the league at some games that have happened earlier this year, you know the hack is good. Uh, our ninth and tenth place team is good. Our first and second place teams are good. And so you can't overlook anybody and. Um, when hack play rolls around, it, it, look at the margins of victory most of the time. They're not blowouts. And uh, everybody has the best scouting reports for those games. All the coaches work very hard and are very familiar with the other's coaching style and the other personnel. And so it, it is a classic trap situation. But then again, about any game in the league play can be viewed that way. So it's important that we come out and focus solely on Missouri Valley because just like we learned last year and just like they've beaten some good people early this year, uh, they've got a chance, especially with their talent, to do some good things and beat us.